Hello, Calculus 2 students. This is the fourth video in our collection of series practice videos. And in particular, we have five series that can be over any tests from 5.2, 5.3, and 5.4. What I encourage you to do after you finish this, okay, it's five series. But I will include right after this the series strategy video, which has 10 series, which can be from anything. So that also is just more practice. The more practice, the more likely we are to succeed. Okay. Well, this first one, when I see tan inverse, um, I think about the fact that the limit as k goes to infinity of tan inverse of k is pi over 2. Moreover, tan inverse sits between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And for k bigger than or equal to 0, tan inverse is non-negative. So I'm going to use comparison here. This is a non-negative series. We have 0 less than or equal to my series, tan inverse of k divided by 7 to the k. And tan inverse is less than or equal to pi over 2. So this would be 4 times pi over 2 over 7 to the k. This series is geometric. Let's justify this series, the sum k equals 0 to infinity. My numerator is 2 pi, and the denominator is 7 to the k. This is geometric. My initial term is 2 pi, but I don't need that to say whether or not the series converges or diverges. So this is geometric. You notice my r is 1 over 7. Absolute value of r less than 1 converges. Well, I'm not quite finished. You notice this series converges term by term. The terms of my actual series are less than or equal to terms of a convergence series. So this is comparison test. We quote the test. And we state the conclusion. It's that the sum k equals 0 for tan inverse of k divided by 7 to the k converges. Next question. You notice this is an alternating series, number 2. When I'm doing an alternating series, first thing I do always is I look at the absolute value of the terms and see what's happening. So absolute value of a k is here. It's the square root of k divided by 2 plus the square root of k. What do we see here? The, the, these terms are not going to 0. We take a limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of ak, which is here. Copy and paste. You see here we have a square root of k and also square root of k. This limit is 1. What that says is my actual terms, this is where I need to use a term test, my actual terms, which is minus 1 to the k um, times this. Square root k divided by 2 plus square root of k. This limit does not exist it will oscillate between close to 1 and minus 1 for k very large. So we quote the term test. My series, k equals 4 to infinity of these terms, minus 1 to the k, square root of k divided by 2 plus square root of k, diverges. The biggest mistake I see when it's an alternating series and you use term test to conclude diverges is that people don't do the limit of the actual terms. I see students do this part and then they quote the term test and say something about the overall series. But for the term test, without a doubt, we need this. We need the limit of the actual terms as part of our work. And so this is fundamental to this problem. Number three, well, here I have a sum of two terms. Let's look at them individually and see if we can use that to make a conclusion. So one looks like this, n equals 2 to infinity of 4 over n. 
And one looks like this, n equals two to infinity of two to the n divided by seven to the n. Well, the sum four over n, this is, well, it's constant times, but we can just say harmonic series. And this diverges. This second part, the sum n equals two to infinity of two to the n over seven to the n, this is geometric. My a happens to be two squared over seven squared, but what governs the convergence or divergence is the r. And I can see r here, it's two over seven. Absolute value of r less than one converges. So what do I see? I have one series that diverges, I have one series that converges, and I add them term by term. Well, the sum of a divergent series and a convergent series, this will diverge. So this is my final answer. We have a divergent series, and we use properties of series here to conclude this. This was number three. Now, number four, this is alternating, but you notice the directions. Determine whether each series converges or diverges, fully justify our response, state any tests used. In these problems, we are not asked between conditional convergence, absolute convergence, and diverges for an alternating series. All we care about right now, converges, diverges. So the nice thing is, I don't have to specify, but let's look at the um, absolute value of AK. This is always the way I begin when I'm looking at um, an alternating series. This is K to the 1.1 divided by K to the 1.8, which I can rewrite. This is one divided by K raised to the 0 0.7. Now, terms are going to zero because the denominator is growing. We have a fixed numerator. We can use alternating series test here. So this satisfies first, this is definitely decreasing in absolute value. If you take a limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of ak, we get zero. These two together and the fact that my series is actually alternating gives us that this converges. Alternating series test. Alternating series test says this series, k equals one to infinity of minus one to the k, k to the 1.1 divided by k to the 1.8 converges. Now, As a remark, this will converge conditionally because this, if you look at the sum, absolute value of AK, we have a divergent P series. So this will converge conditionally, but we weren't asked to specify which type of convergence. All we needed was converges or diverges. And so this alternating series test is perfectly fine. Number five, this is the last one. If we glance at the terms, you see Exponential, factorial, terms are going to zero. I cannot use the term test. Moreover, because I see the factorials, personally, I would use ratio test. So let's do this here. We look at absolute value, ak plus one over ak. Here, my series is not negative. We have e to the k plus one divided by, we have to be careful here, it's three parentheses, k plus one factorial. So this will be 3k plus 3 factorial. That's ak plus 1. Now, ak, we have e to the k, and then we have 3k factorial. Invert, multiply, line things up. My numerator, I have e to the k plus 1. My denominator, I have e to the k. My numerator, I have 3k factorial. My denominator, I have 3k plus 3 factorial. 
Well, let's simplify this. So I will come here for simplification. First of all, you notice I have an E in the numerator. And then I will recopy this for the moment. Now we have to be a little bit careful with um, how we can cancel out these factorials. So 3k plus 3 factorial, we have 3k plus 3, march back 1. We have 3k plus 2, march back 1 again. We have 3k plus 1, march back 1 again. Then we will have a 3k. And so what's left, if we keep marching back 1, we will have a 3k factorial. Now we can see how to cancel all of this off. That's why I needed to write a little bit here. What I'm left with, absolute value, ak plus 1 over ak is e divided by this product of these three terms, 3k plus 3, 3k plus 2, 3k plus 1. I'm ready to take a limit. We take a limit as k goes to infinity, absolute value ak plus 1 over ak, which is a limit as k goes to infinity of this. This is simplified. Now you could certainly multiply all of this out, but I don't need to. What do I see looking at this? Well, my numerator is the constant. My denominator is some degree three polynomial in particular, and my denominator is growing without bound. And so this limit is zero, which is certainly less than one. So we quote the test by the ratio test. My series, which is the sum k equals zero to infinity of e to the k over 3k factorial converges. Just like this. Okay, this is the end of these five that were from a variety of tests from 5.2, 5.3, and 5.4. At this point, as I mentioned, I encourage you to look at the series strategy video where there are 10 more that you can come from any test. Thank you so much, students.